Just how worried are you about the Cowboys defense facing this Lions offense on Saturday? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast locked Network, your on. team locked every locked day. Locked On. Locked On. Locked, locked On. Locked on Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked on Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NFL. That is linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. This is our final episode of 2023. Wow. Yeah, I know. We've done like 250 episodes. It's been kind of <laughs> wild. Uh, on today's show, we're getting ready for Cowboys Lions on Saturday Night Football, which is being broadcast by Monday Night Football. I Stick with us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's let's start with the Cowboys defense because that's the matchup. I'm I'm super excited mm. to see. Are you worried about the Cowboys defense going into this game against the Lions? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think it's you know it's a good offense they're facing and gets one of the best coordinators in all of football. Um, I think that the Cowboys defense has uh, you know left a lot to be desired these last two weeks. I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with who they who they played, but I mean. They're not going to get a reprieve this week against nope. Detroit. Uh, so uh, I think that there's certainly reasons to be concerned. And, and I think that, um, you know, this is going to be another game where the Dallas defense is going to need help from the Cowboys offense, right? Like I think yeah. getting into a kind of game script that the Cowboys are, are successful in is going to be really important because I think trying to make Detroit one dimensional is going to be one of the best ways to try to stop this defense uh, offense and um, and if you, if you're able to kind of let them kind of dictate their game plan and play their game throughout throughout the game, uh, it, it you know it could be a really long day. They have an offensive line that can really really lean on you. And they're uh, all healthy, so, by the way. All yeah. five starters are healthy. So that's a big deal. So you got to find a way to like get them out of a, a out of a balanced pa- uh, game script and 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 just attack them and make them play uh, left handed. Which you know, they're a good passing team. But mm-hmm. I think that they would prefer to be a more balanced team if, if given their druthers and the Cowboys should not give them their druthers. Two things to look for in this one. Number one, it's just tackling. This is one of the yeah. best teams in the NFL after the catch. Uh, Sam Laporta is like one or two in the league in yards after the catch. Per yeah. reception for the tight ends. Gibbs is obviously incredible out of the backfield. Amon Ross St. Brown can make Brown plays after good. the catch. Yeah. And then they've got a fully healthy Jamison Williams who – is as fast as anybody in the league. So tackling is going to be huge in this one. They've kind of struggled with that a little bit over the last two weeks. And then it's just getting pressure on Jared Goff. Uh, Obviously, Josh Allen is amazing when he can move around in the pocket. He can break tackles. Tua got rid of the ball so quick that it was hard to create pressure. Of these three quarterbacks, Jared Goff is the one that struggles the most when he gets pressure in his face. It's why the Cowboys were able to beat him last year. Can you create quick pressure and have good enough coverage that Jared Goff has to hold onto the ball? That's really going to be the key if the Cowboys win this game or they don't. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, if you allow them to just sit back there and operate, I mean, Jared Goff wants to be a flag football quarterback. Yes. You know, he doesn't seven want to get seven. touched. He wants yep. to throw seven on seven. He's been doing it since he was a kid. Uh, you know, he to me is like the best example of these you know, uh, quarterbacks that has probably lived in these seven on seven camps since, you know, before high school. And, uh, and, and that's how we'd like to operate. And, and, and I think as he's gotten older and as the game has kind of come to him a little bit more, especially since he's been with Detroit, I think he's gotten a little bit better at kind of handling some of the more physical aspects of the game, but he still is, it's still to, you know, his core that you get some hits on him, you get pressure in his face, his eyes start to drop. He starts to become a less effective quarterback, especially attacking down the field. Uh, That's definitely the way, the quickest and easiest way to kind of slow down uh, and potentially disrupt this, uh, this lion's offense. 
Uh, just by the way, to answer the question up top, I am worried about the Cowboys defense in this one. It just seems like Detroit's got a lot of weapons and the the type of offense that the Cowboys kind of have struggled with this year. So we, we say this every week. It's really important that the Cowboys build an early lead in this game to make Detroit somewhat one dimensional. I think. I think they're going to run the ball kind of regardless of the situation, but you want them feeling like they have to throw the ball 35, 40 times, take five and seven step drops, because that's when I do think the Cowboys could have an impact on this one. Yeah. I mean, I think it's more important. I was trying to figure out the phrasing of this last night, but it's more important that the Cowboys make the run less useful than stopping the run. You know, like, I don't know that they're going to be how well, they will be able to completely stop the run if, if Detroit really wants to kind of lean into it. But I think the thing that you can do is make the run a yes, a less useful tool yeah. by, you know, increasing your lead, playing ahead uh, and, 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 and making, you know, the wasting of the clock work for you, not against you. And I think that's, that's how you kind of get Goff into a situation where he's going to have to start throwing more on first and second down than he, they feel comfortable with. Uh, and, and when you can get him into a situation where maybe he's not as heavily protected as, you know, a, a big third down where you can you know, bring in all your protections and then run routes with Will, uh, Williams and, and, and Amon St. Brown to help hope to get open. So forcing them off their spot, forcing them to, to throw when they you know don't necessarily feel comfortable throwing. That's the way that you can create turnovers, big plays on defense. That's how this defense, you know, makes its mark on this game. I, I wanted to ask you about Micah Parsons before we move on. Uh, Penn ASOL is PFF's number one graded uh, tackle in the NFL this year. Yep. He plays on the right side. That's primarily where Micah Parsons lines up. Do you think this would be a good game to kind of leave him on that island with Sewell, or would you rather see him lined up more inside to try to get some quick pressure on Goff? Yeah, I mean, I imagine they move him around a little bit. I mean, I'm sure he has interest and in, wants to go against Sewell uh, a lot. I wouldn't be shocked if they wanted to see a little bit of Demarcus Lawrence on Sewell, you know, just because so well. yeah. he is a physical force, but he is still kind of learning hand techniques. And so you wonder if maybe, uh, you know, some of that veteran savvy can work against uh, Sewell a little bit better. So, well, and uh, Sewell's a really good run blocker. So, if maybe having Lawrence more on that side to help in the run game, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And, 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 and I think, you know, uh, a Parsons versus Taylor Decker matchup even healthy i think is yeah. is a matchup that the that the is a winning matchup for the cowboys uh last thing before we move on if you told me like a number of points that the cowboys need to hold the lions to to win this game what, what's the number for you well i mean we'll talk about the offense here in a second but i i mean i i think the cowboys offense can move and score points on this defense I think on the so, detroit probably. defense so I, I would say you know if if you can hold them under 24 points. That's kind of the number. I was I was waffling back and forth between like 27 and 24. If you can hold them to 24 or fewer points, I think you win this game. I do too. I, I think, you know, I, just because I believe that the offense is going to be able to make some hay against this uh, Detroit secondary specifically, but we'll talk about that here. Yeah, bit. let's talk about that because CeeDee Lamb needs 180 yards to pass Michael Irvin for the most receiving yards ever in a season by a Dallas Cowboy wide receiver. I know some Lion fans think he's going to get it on Saturday night. Let's talk about if uh, CD Lamb is going to have a big game or not. We'll do that next. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have this many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or the resources to hire Thankfully, with LinkedIn, that process is so quick and easy. They've even just launched a feature that helps you write your job descriptions, making the process even quicker. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL. That is linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to the Lockdown Cowboys podcast. So we wanted to let you know that Lockdown has launched the first ever 
National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. Landon, let's talk about this Cowboys offense. So mm. the, the, the Lions have been a little bit of a disaster on defense this year. Mm-hmm. Their best players, Aiden Hutchinson, and then the rest is not good. Mm. Uh, do you think the Cowboys are going to be able to have a lot of success on that side of the ball this week? Yeah, I do. I think specifically throwing the football, is they're going to be able to, to make some hay. I mean, I think you know, you, you've got Branch in there, who's another guy that has really kind of come on for them a little bit. Uh, it, Melifonwu, who is a uh, – is he the cousin or brother? Brother of, of Obi Melifonwu. Brother Obi Melifonwu, who Cowboys fans should probably know the name of. I'm sure we have had many discussions about potential rumors. For a while. Would you say, yeah, he was on the practice squad. That's right, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and we and we also at many points during early in his career talked about uh you know trying to trade for him. So, uh, but Melifonwu has had uh, quite a few few last few games. He's had a yeah. number of sacks, a, a defensive touchdown, at least one defensive touchdown. Um, but yes, I don't know that they necessarily have a a, a ton of of talent. Uh, in the, the the secondary, uh, I think you know, like we said, Branch is still a guy that that you know is a playmaker. He can do some things. I don't know that I trust Branch to be like a physical matchup. I mean, he's kind of a he is a nickelback, and he is kind of a borderline safety type. You know, almost sort of that Tyron Matthew kind mm-hmm. of mold of player right mm-hmm. but i wouldn't necessarily want him if i was detroit covering cd lamb one-on-one throughout nope. the game i think that's a pretty serious mismatch and then you add in the fact that they've got you know i think i think it sounds like cam sutton is going to play right from what well he didn't like. practice on thursday i think he's questionable with a toe injury i it sounds right. like he's going to play but uh we should also mention chauncey gardner johnson did not yep, get activated for this game yep. he will not play in this one uh, Kirby Joseph, their other safety, uh, he is questionable to play in the, uh, this one as well. They're just really banged up in the secondary on top of some of the injuries they have. Uh, Emmanuel Mosley, who they expected to be one of their starting outside corners, he's on the injured reserve list. I mean, it's Jerry Jacobs is another corner. He's not going to play in this one. And they're they're banged up at the cornerback position. They're playing some guy from – from uh, I'm pretty sure what was it North Iowa or what what was it it's a I just had it Northern Arizona he's a Northern Arizona lumberjack as the uh, the as the other uh, starting Khalil quarter. Dorsey Khalil yeah. Dorsey yeah so uh, you know it's it's it is one of the situations where they don't have a ton of talent there and then on top of that they're banged up right yeah. so CGJ obviously one of the premier players on this defense last year has had injury issues all throughout the season. You know, there was a lot of of, of uh, excitement to see him paired with Branch in that secondary, just to see the kind of dynamism that those two could, you know, create in the back end. It just hasn't worked out so far this year. Uh, and then you add in the fact that Cam Sutton wasn't a very good corner and to start with, and he's got a toe injury. So yeah. they are going to have problems trying to cover the Cowboys, not even just CeeDee Lamb, but I think across the yeah. board. Uh, so the Cowboys should not be afraid to be aggressive and attack this this, this defense down the field and, and I think put pressure mm-hmm. on the the Detroit Lions offense as we talked about to try to keep up because uh you know look they're playing at home on a field that they obviously score a ton of points on uh they should play with a level of confidence that you know requires Detroit to kind of keep up with that offensive output I, I want to mention something about Cam Sutton I, I think Cam Sutton is actually a pretty good slot corner I happen to know him pretty well from his days in Pittsburgh mm. um but the problem is, is they just don't have the outside corners right now because of all the injuries. So what they've kind of done is they've moved Sutton to the outside and they just cobbled together that slot position, whether it's Brian Branch or Malafonwu. I mean, this should be a game that CeeDee Lamb absolutely goes off. And I know Detroit's going to give him a ton of attention, but I'm not sure it's going to matter. I, I, I think this should be a game that CeeDee gets – double digit targets, maybe even by the end of the first half, because I'm not sure the lions can cover him. Yeah. And, and, and the 180 yard thing is, you know, kind of only half joking. I mean, honestly, no, I mean, they, I'm being serious. I think I also think CD wants to do it. Yep. Cause I think he's going to break this record, by the way, I think he yes. wants to do it in 16 games and not 17 games, just because that's the same number, number that Michael Irvin played. 
yeah, and, you know, and and again, uh, Irvin's one hundred percent going to be there, you know, because yeah. because it's because uh, the Jimmy John- Johnson thing, which we haven't even talked about yet about this game, but, but it, yeah, I mean, just I love it. I love that shirt I'm getting as soon as I get a chance. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean. You know, I think the motivation there, obviously, it being a big game, it being yep. a big game historically for the Cowboys. Uh, I, yeah, I see a a lot of targeting to CeeDee Lamb, yep. moving him around. And I don't, you know, I, I imagine that what Detroit's going to end up having to do is give us kind of a lot of exotic looks, maybe send some guys after us, because I, I just don't imagine that, you know, playing straight up man coverage or even cloud coverage with, with uh, a guy over the top is going to be enough to kind of stop CD lamb. And then even if it is, I really worry about Detroit's ability. If they, you know, expend all those resources to cover yeah. CD lamb, I really worry about their ability to cover Ferguson cooks, you know, and, 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 and those guys down the field. So I, I do think the Cowboys off a uh, pass offense should feast. I would think so as well. I also think this is a, a big game to get the running game going. Um, they're without their, I mean, really good defensive tackle, Ali McNeil. He's on the injured yeah. reserve list. He won't play. Uh, they've got, I mean, the list of guys that they've got playing defensive tackle now is it's yeah. pretty amazing. It's yeah. Benito Jones, who was a seventh round pick by the Dolphins a few years ago. John Kaminsky, who was an edge rusher for the Falcons. Isaiah Bugs was a seventh round pick from the Steelers that got cut. I mean, they brought in they this week they brought in Tyson Alulu, who's like 37 years old to play Tyson. defensive tackle. Yeah. And then on the edge rusher spot, it's I mean, we obviously Aiden Hutchinson's really good. And that spot worries me because of sure steel. Steel, but like Justin sorry, excuse me, James Houston was their other edge. He's out from this game. It's Charles Harris, it's Bruce Irving, uh, who is 37 years old at this point. I mean, yeah. they, I would think that the Cowboys should have a lot of success running the ball on Saturday night. Yeah. And then we're also, I mean, we're really burying the lead for some of our folks here. It's, it's, it's potentially, well, I mean, it is, it's going to be a Deuce Vaughn game. It we're, is. we're going to, yeah. we're going to see some Deuce Vaughn. So uh, I don't know how excited we should all be about that just based on what we've seen from him so far, but at least it's another opportunity. Maybe think they've kind of figured some things out here. It sounds like they've got some packages in mind. So I imagine a heavy load of Tony Pollard, obviously. And then, you know, look, I understand everyone's mad at him right now, but Hunter Lipke is going to get some carries in this game. And he should, Which he should. I think. Which he should. Yeah. They, like, they, outside they of to, that one thing, Bumble, they, I think he has a role carrying yeah. the football. And I think this is a good game to get him six touches, just to continue yep. to try to work him into the offense. Um, because I think when playoff time comes, you're going to need him. So uh, as long as the Cowboys can – adequately contain Aiden Hutchinson. I mean, I, I, I'm sure they're going to have a lot of six man protections to give Dak some time unless there's some wild things like unnecessary sacks and tip balls at the line of scrimmage and drops. This should be a game that the Cowboys score 30 plus points. I heck Nick Mullins. If he wasn't absolutely off yeah. on a few throws <laughs> last week, could have yeah. scored 30 points. And that's with TJ Hawkinson leaving in the first half, Jordan Addison leaving in the first half. Dak should have a monster game. At least that's what I'm expecting here. Yeah, I imagine that the Cowboys will likely – you'll probably see a little bit more 12 personnel than you would normally because they'll probably bring in uh, Scooney to come in and just basically be a, an extra tackle over there probably. with Steele, right? And then they'll send out uh, uh, Fer, uh, Fergie and, and Cooks and, and Slam. And honestly, I just don't know that the – the Detroit secondary has the horses to cover all those guys, no. you know, like, so uh, I think that they, the Cowboys should consistently try to find a way to uh, attack the secondary, but not be, you know, look, getting into the run game is good, but I, I do think that it's important for the Cowboys to try to establish establish the pass early so, in the game pass first so you can run later. I, That's I, I really right. think yeah. that should be the strategy here. I, 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 I just think that it's just, it's, you know, there's, there's going to, look, you're going to want to obviously run the ball and there's going to be some balance there, but I think just getting after them early, uh, yeah. knowing that you can run the football late and, and really kind of kill this game. I think that is, you know, we talked about worrying about the defense. That's the best way to get, yeah. to get the worries off your defense is just completely take the air out of the ball, score points early and, and make Detroit play your game basically. All right, let's make our predictions for this Saturday night matchup between the lions and the Cowboys on Jimmy Johnson night. We will get to that. Next. This episode is brought to you by DoorDash. Did the game 
Go to timeout. Time to order in with DoorDash. Is it halftime? That is ordering in time. Two-minute warning. You got it. That is your cue to order in. Whenever the game clock stops, that's the time to order in with DoorDash. Order pizza, wings, sodas, burgers, or even just buns on DoorDash and get it all delivered without missing the game. This is a great week to just sit at home and DoorDash because we've got Cowboys on Saturday night, a whole slate of NFL games on Sunday, and then we got the college football playoffs on Monday. What, what's what's better than that? DoorDash, your favorite food, sit down, watch some football, get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter promo code LOCK23, subject to change, terms apply. Again, that is 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter promo code LOCK23, subject to change, terms apply. We also want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That is $150 if your team wins. I suggest taking the 49ers. They're playing the Commanders this week. They're like 13 and a half point favorites. I think that's a pretty safe bet there. I think the the 49ers are going to bounce back. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options available, including spreads, player props, over-unders. You guys know I love the futures market. You can still go bet on who you think is going to win MVP. Nothing has been decided yet, so go check that out. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season with FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Welcome back to this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Every day, we will be back early next week breaking down the Lions-Cowboys game from Saturday night. Well, let's make our predictions, Landon. Final prediction of 2023. Who do oh, you man. have winning this game? Uh, I'm picking the Cowboys. I took a break last week, uh, uh, and I, you know, unfortunately, was correct. Um, but I, I, I do feel like, look, I, there's lots of things to look at this game and feel very nervous about, right? Like, I think it's, it's if you kind of just did a very quick examination of like the names that are involved and 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 some of the historical stuff, uh, uh, it, it's it's easy to kind of get worked up. But I think if you've watched the Detroit Lions recently. Um, this defense is really struggling, you know, and, and, the yeah. yeah. And, and, and the Cowboys defense, you know, I think it's easy. Similarly, it's easy to look at the numbers and, and view it as a very struggling defense. That's, you know, I think that, that since I think I saw a stat that said that since week 13, they're 30th in DVOA on defense. You know, I, I think a lot of this is the fact that they played Miami and they played Buffalo on the road the last two weeks. So I, I do imagine the defense kind of bouncing back a little bit. There's pride on the line there for to a large degree. So um, I'm going to pick the Cowboys. Uh, I'm going to pick, a, I think, a similar score that I picked last week, except just inverse. I'm picking the Cowboys went 28-24. Um, I, I just think that they will be able to, to score points. They will throw the ball like we, we talked about. Um, and I think the key is going to be how well are they going to be able to run the ball to kind of salt this thing away. I do think that without Aline McNeil, um, you know, Anceloni is back, but, you know, I think he's been banged up a lot, you know, since coming back, he doesn't look quite the same. Um, so I, I do think the Cowboys are going to be able to kind of salt this one away if they need to. So I, again, I'm picking them to win 28, 24. I'm picking the Cowboys to win as well. I'm going to be a little bit more optimistic and more positive in the new year. Like that was uh-huh. one of my resolutions. Uh, no, I picked Miami last week. I just think Dallas is going to – I think there's going to be a sense of urgency from the Cowboys on both sides of the ball. Uh, I think they're going to want to play really well in what's likely to be their final home game of the year. I think the crowd is going to be buzzing. And I I always mention the motivation because I do think it matters. I think it matters too. Detroit has won the NFC North. It's pretty unlikely that they're going to get the one seed. I mean, they would need San Francisco to lose out. It's not going to happen, right? The most that the, the Lions could go up is to be the two seed. I, I'm not sure how big of a gap it is between the two and the three seed in the NFC. It probably doesn't matter. Well, the Cowboys still have the division to play for, and it's a home game with the Jimmy Johnson stuff. I just think you're going to see a very fired up team, especially after losing back to back games. I'm picking the Cowboys 31 30 in a shootout in Dallas. 
Yeah, I like that. You know, I, I think you know it's just one of those things. The Cowboys have only. I think this is the first time the Cowboys had lost back to back games in the Mike McCarthy era. Mm -hmm. There's just you know, there's just a lot of things about this that kind of feel like a bounce back game for the Cowboys. All the emotion is on the Cowboys side, uh, and they have more to play for, which I think has been not been the case the last two weeks against the last two opponents. And I think, and, it's and, and on top of that, Jimmy Johnson's getting inducted into the Ring of Honor. Like, yeah. well, I mean. The vibes are going to be immaculate. Like it's immaculate, be, immaculate. It's They're wearing so the blues fun. too. Like oh it's the good, gosh, it's the yeah. good navies. Like yeah, I'm yeah. feeling good about. It. Uh, usually, I, I mean, longtime listeners of this show know that I'm not overly positive when it comes to picking games. I do just have a feeling that the Cowboys are going to. I don't know if they're going to play sharp in a clean game, but I do think the energy level is going to yeah. be pretty high in this one. And it's usually when the Cowboys play. Uh, with that kind of fire, they usually win. Uh, I'm taking them here as well. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every single day. Go check out our YouTube channel. We post videos every single day over there. Go check out the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. We'd like to thank you for listening to all the episodes in 2023. It was a fantastic year for Locked On Cowboys. Can't wait for 2024 to see what the rest of the season brings. So, We'll see you guys in the new year. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. Enjoy the game. Enjoy your new year. And we will see you right back here next week.